قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد We were discussing last week the second verse or the second ayah with which we had commenced Let's listen to the ayah reflect on its translation and then insha'Allah we will have a discussion on some of the vocabulary of this ayah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا but hath made it straight to give warning of stern punishment from him and to bring unto the believers who do good works the news that theirs will be a fair reward. We had discussed previously about two areas of learning of the Arabic language which those that are familiar with the study of Arabic would know and for the benefit of uh, for our listeners or for the benefit of our viewers and for the benefit of some of the scholars of Arabic language or learners in the Arabic language there are two fields of learning they call sarf and nahu sarf is the spelling and the structure of the word and nahu in a very simple simplistic understanding is the placement of the word and both has an impact on the commentary and the translation Sarf would mean the attributes of the word and Nahwa would mean the placement of the word. With regards to the word Qayyima which we are discussing, from both we understand that irrespective of the times with which, in which you are living in, the Quran Kareem which has no iwaj, which has no crookedness in it, it is qayyiman, it is upright, it makes people upright. Irrespective of the time or the circumstances, at all times, it will provide the understanding and the teachings for it to be what it's supposed to be. It will always remain a standard for truthfulness. Having said that, which was a recap of what we had discussed last week, Let's discuss some of the scholarly commentary of the word Qayyimah. The quran Kareem is a book that is upright and also it protects and safeguards the truth in other scriptures. If you recall, we gave some of the broad meanings of the word Qiyam and Qayyimah. The quran Kareem stands over other scriptures it stands over them, it watches over their matter. So Quran is watching over previous books. The Quran and especially the Surah takes a number of things that the people of the book believe and it confirms the truth in them while filtering out and correcting the falsehood in them. The Quran's purpose, one among many, one among many purposes, is to protect the truths within the original Torah, to protect the truths within the original Injil, which is the Bible. The Quran, its role as Muhaymin, one of the most important roles, and in this case, within the meaning of the word Qayyima, is actually to protect the integrity of previous prophets. Not just previous revelations, 
but to protect the integrity of previous prophets. The Bible in its altered form has sometimes bad things to say about previous prophets. It sometimes has wrong things to say about previous prophets. The Quran only has the most dignified, corrected teachings that set the record straight on the prophet's profiles and on their character. And therefore the Quran is also qayyiman because it stands over the erroneous things that other altered versions of the Torah and Injil has to say about the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam. The Quran is qayyiman, it is straight, and has no deviations in it. Meaning, it is only emphasizing وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَا is the expected sequence. The Quran there has, from in its inherent condition and position, has no crookedness in it. It is qayyima, it is straight, and has no deviation in it. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ قَيِّمَا وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَا قَيِّمًا It emphasizes what the Quran is about. And the lahu, which we spoke of earlier, is put earlier than expected. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجًا Allah could have said, وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ عِوَجًا لَهُ These are such beautiful gems of the Arabic language and of the Quran. One of the benefits of putting the word lahu before iwaj is to give us the understanding of exclusivity. In other words, in this book in particular, the Quran in particular, Allah did not allow for any deviation whatsoever. We suggest that there are other books, other revealed books, which he did allow the possibility of deviation in it. And this Quran will set that previous books that were deviated straight. This book is qayyiman, upright, and it will protect, commit. It will commit to safeguard the best interests of the slaves of Allah. It commits to safeguard the best interests of all the prophets of Allah, whether they have to do with their religion or they have to do with their worldly life. And this Quran also gives us the guarantee of safeguarding the religion of those that wish to follow the Quran, be it in their religious life or be it in their worldly life. This also comes with the word qayyiman, the meaning of safeguarding over all the previous heavenly scriptures. The book, Al-Quran, وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ إِوَجَا Allah did not place for it, keep for it any form of deviousness. Qayyiman, it is upright. The book is perfect in and of itself and seeks to perfect and set straight all besides it. In itself is a noun, Qayyiman, but some nouns have upon whom it is done. And when the noun is rooted in a verb like it is rooted in the word qayman, the word qama, it's a verbal kind of noun. Who is this Quran doing the uprightness for? Who is it doing the qawam for? Who is it making upright? This is actually not mentioned. So that it isn't limited to one nation. It is not limited to one generation. It is not limited to one ethnicity. Or it is not limited to one age group. Or one kind of people with one kind of background. Or one kind of prerequisite. This book is going to be qiyaman, qayyiman. It is going to make upright. And the invitation is open. It will set anybody and anything right. That happens when the maf'ul is not mentioned. When the person or the people or the nation or the generation for whom it is done is not mentioned. 
Some commentators have even went further to say that this Quran stands upright to fix in the best interest of all human beings. This insight may be rooted in the fact that this is not limited. Why limit it to just the servants of Allah? But let it include all human beings. We didn't leave anything out from this Quran. It takes care of every concern that human beings may have. Another commentator, Sheikh Alusi, has mentioned in Ruh al Mani that this book is qayyiman, straight, upright, in which there is no falling short of the correct and no going over the wrong. When you fall short of the minimum expectation that is and when you may go overboard and beyond the maximum, this book teaches you to stay within the limits. You don't fall short and you don't go beyond. Allah does not put a burden on the slaves of Allah that they cannot carry. It is qayman, it is like an image. You can only stand up in the weight you've been given is enough that you can carry. The Quran and the message of the Quran, the teachings of the Quran is so balanced that every person is able to carry those responsibilities that Allah has given his slaves. And Allah gave his slaves are obviously ones they can carry and stand upright with. This is the idea of the fitna of the Dajjal. And even then, you can stand still upright, irrespective of how challenging the times will be. As we move on towards the end of times, and as we are going into the times of these great trials, irrespective of how severe those trials will be, this Quran and the lessons and the teachings of this Quran are such that you will be able to stand upright in the toughest of times. You are not going to be in a position where you can't stand by what Allah has given you. It will never fall short in the realm of guidance whereby people might need another book. That's why Allah sent the Quran as the last heavenly book. It will stand upright and it will do the right things until the day of judgment. Guidance will not be needed from anywhere else. The Quran is about absolute and complete guidance. Stay tuned, inshallah, when we return, we will continue with the discussion of what is the meaning of Qayyima. <laughs> طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We've been discussing very deep meanings of the word qayyima and as I have said previously it is intentional intentional because these 10 verses of the Quran Kareem or these 10 verses of Surah Kahf are very deep in the meaning. The linguistic meaning of qayyima, and we are discussing qayyima, meaning when you stand over something, then you are committed to fixing something. So the Quran is committed to straightening you out. It's going to stand over you, and it's going to watch over you. It's going to watch over the guidance of the human race. It's going to stand and watch over the guidance of the ummah and rectify the affairs of the Ummah. When we thank Allah that this book is Qayyima, and whatever crisis we are having, ethical, political, factional, moral crisis that, the man, that mankind is facing. If you study previous nations, and study their practices throughout the Quran, you will find every one of those practices in the Muslim Ummah. And in the worst of those times, Allah sent us this book that is Qayyimah. And this book is committed to rectifying the most crooked of nations. So let's look at 
from all the various meanings that have been given of this word qayyima by the various mufassirin. A brother who I have great respect for, Noman Ali Khan, has very beautifully brought a comprehensive meaning of this word. That the Quran, وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَ قَيِّمًا The book has always been qayyimah. But the more the word curve, the more the world curves, and the more the world deviates, the more the contrast between this world and the book becomes sharper. Besides him, Maulana Sajjad Naumani, who has also taken lots of time and effort in giving a commentary of the surah in contemporary times, has also made mention of this fact. That the Quran, the book, has always been qayyima. The more the world curves and deviates, and the more the world curves and the more the world is curving, and the more the world is deviating from fitrah, from the natural disposition that man needs to have, the more the contrast between the book and the Quran and the rest of the world is becoming sharper. A believer will notice that the world is more and more at odds with his world view. And a believer will notice that the world will notice that this book is totally at odds with the way that we are living. We mentioned this in the beginning. An ex extreme aversion towards this book will develop as we go along in the times that we are living in. And as we come closer to the intensity that this fitna and this trial of the ideology of the Jal, the false messiah, is becoming apparent, we will notice that the Quran is totally at odds with the way we are living, the way our businesses are conducted, the way our educational systems are run. So an extreme aversion towards this Quran will develop. This Quran, this book is straight and no matter how much society deviates, it is going astray. No matter how society is going astray, this Quran has the power to take that which is bent and straighten it again. In our society, crookedness, deviation, which the Quran has described as iwaj, is going to become more apparent. And daily we are noticing this. Daily we are observing this. The only way we will reason properly is if we come back to this book. And the only way we will remedy this is that if we come back to the Quran, we come back to the Quran and the teachings of the Quran and allow the Quran to fix our own personal thoughts. Today we have deviation in our thoughts. We have deviation in our thinking. We have deviation in our outlook. We have deviation with regards to our prior prioritization. We have deviation in our outlook on the world. The one common ground to the entire ummah is the Quran. Quran is qayyimah. It is straight and it sets things straight. And it puts values on certain things in our life straight. If we put value on something that has not been given value in Allah's book, and that which we give value upon becomes the priority in our lives, this would guarantee division. 
it would guarantee disunity within this ummah and the teachings of the Quran is here to straighten that division it is here to straighten the deviation and the lessons in the surah are here to give us the insight it is here to give us the insight into prioritizing our thoughts prioritizing our thinking our actions our behavior so that it is aligned and brought back into alignment in the manner that the Quran is and that is the meaning of qayyima the Quran kareem which has no iwaj in it it has no deviation in it and it is qayyima it straightens the wrong that is there so the Quran is upright something that maintains or holds other things up and this is the quality that Allah gives to the Quran it is not deviated in itself it keeps society straight it keeps families straight it keeps people straight it keeps societies families and people that believe in it from deviating it ensures that they remain straight and this is mentioned because with previous revelations people introduced deviations within their revelations they introduced deviations within their revelations and then that in turn caused people to deviate allah sent the quran allah sent it the quran qayyiman allowing it to make things upright the grammatical analysis of the word qayyiman qayyiman liyundira ba'san shadidan min ladun wa yubashshir almu'minina alladhina ya'maluna as-salihat anna lahum ajran hasana a straightforward book to warn of a severe punishment from him and to give the good news to the believers who do righteous deeds that they will have an excellent reward in paradise what this is a translation of what we discussed so far all praise alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi alkitab ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا gratitude are due to Allah who sent the book and the state of the book having ensured that the book be upright and a source of protection a corrector and a caretaker especially upon his ultimate slave alone while not furnishing the book with any possibility of the book having any deviation is a state of how this book came down all praise and gratitude are due to Allah who sent the book and he did not furnish the book with any possibility of deviation by the way especially upon his ultimate slave alone and having ensured that the book be upright and a source of protection a corrector and a caretaker wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh inshallah as we go along we are going to continue with this very interesting commentary in depth discussion of the surah surah al kahf قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري